Okay, so last time we uh, we learned the the diode clipping circuits, okay, and we see that the diode has the ability, based on the design of the circuit, to clip after the input the input voltage after some point, okay, and one application of this, if you have some sensitive circuit to voltage change. Okay, and it only accept one voltage input, for example. And then you can use diodes to stabilize, we can say, or regulate the input voltage to that circuit. Okay, and this is one example that we take uh, this circuit in here. This is a very simple circuit for clipping. And we control the clipping point by the value of VB. Okay, and this is also one, one of your assignments is to check the output of the circuit when VB is negative, okay? And, uh, you know, for some point of VB, for some value of VB, or even as a parameter, if VB is just a parameter and we see it's positive, for example, then you will have something like what's shown here in this, uh, in this plot, okay? So the output should be like this. This is the voltage on the resistance this resistance, and this is the voltage, the output, which is VD plus VB. The voltage on the diode plus the voltage on the battery, VB. And if the battery voltage is, is, is positive, okay, you should have something like this. And this level of cutting or clipping, this level in here may go up or down, based on the value of VB. So for higher values of VB, it will go up. So the cutting or the clipping will happen at, you know, higher values. If it has low value, lower values, it will go, it, the clipping may happen earlier at, at lower values of the V input. Okay. And you know, as a hint for your, for your homework, if it's negative, the clipping will be in that region. Okay. Good. Okay, so. Okay, this is clipping. Now we're gonna see another uh, important application for diodes, which is uh, the rectification. Or basically or simply converting EC sign AC signals into DC signals. Okay, so basically what we, what we are capable of uh, in, in just our life now is to generate AC signals. Okay, if you have a dam, for example, and you have some hydraulic uh, uh, pressure of water, you can you run this water into a turbine, this turbine will, you know, rotate and you will generate AC signal for you. Okay, even if you can have a diesel engine, for example, that can, you know, turn on a shaft, this shaft will rotate and this rotation also will generate EC signal for you. So in life, it's easy to generate EC signals or EC voltages, or EC power. But many, many applications, okay, require DC voltages. Like for example, the adapter of your laptop. You have a very big adapter like this. And this guy basically, you know, of course, based on the power consumption of the laptop, it may be large or small. But basically what's inside this adapter is a circuit that can convert AC signal, which is 110 uh, voltage that came out of your outlet in your home into some DC voltage, like five volt, for example, or 15 volt. Uh, also the phone chargers. So phone chargers, chargers also, you know, is a kind of, has, a, has a some circuit that depend on uh, diodes and convert also the input voltage, the AC voltage, okay, uh, into some DC voltage, like three volt or something. Okay, so let's see how, what is the basic circuit that can do this? It's a very, you know, uh, simple circuit, okay? This is the primary circuit. Of course, we 
there are many you know modifications for it to make it more efficient more and more efficient and better we can say so this is the basic you know uh, diode rectifier in this circuit just one diode and the load this is actually a load you can say or you can name it rl r load so this resistance here represents the input resistance of a device your phone for example okay and this source here this is the input it's just the input the outlet that you have at home okay if you have oscilloscope at home and you bought one of the channels in this outlet you will see a signal sinusoidal signals signal with frequency of 60 hertz which means in one second you have 60 periods and the input voltage is 110 rms and last time we, we know that rms is just you know uh, another metric to measure voltage it's ac voltages and basically the peak voltage or the maximum voltage of this output sinusoidal signal is just 110 multiplied by square root of two that's very simple but they usually use these terms, okay? Not the maximum. Okay, so let's draw or sketch. I, I name it as an example. So in the example here, it, it, it's required to sketch VO versus the input. So the voltage here between this point and this point, which is basically the voltage of the, of the load. And also VD versus the input. So let's do that. Let's make it big. And again, you can just draw. When I ask for a sketching, you can just draw one cycle. And I, I know that you are, you know, assuming that what happened in the first cycle will also happen in the second cycle, third cycle, and so on and so forth. So let's, let's make it big. Okay. Let's have. So this is the maximum, the peak voltage, which is 110 square root of two, which is 155.5, just like what you take last time. And this is uh, minus V maximum. So this is V max or VM. This is one mi minus 110 square root of two, which is again 155.5. Okay, and this is, the x-axis or just the time, okay? Uh, and here is, uh, this is one period, which is one over 60. So this is one over 120, which is, you know, half a period, half of one, uh, one over 60. Okay? Okay, so basically the output of this circuit, the voltage on VD or the voltage on VR, will depend heavily on when the diode will turn on and when it will turn off, okay? So we have, again, two regions. <clears throat> we need to know when the diode will turn on and we need to know when the diode will turn off, okay? So let's say, number one, positive half cycle so we are now talking about this part here the positive half cycle so the input is positive you have positive here negative here you know it's just like a battery in that with that polarity and the voltage of course is positive so the diode will be forward so the diode is forward good but we know in the constant voltage model of the diode the diode will turn on only if the battery has enough voltage for him which is 0.7 so if the input is less than 0.7 volt diode will be off so I, D, Mr. ID here, 
is equal to zero. So VRL, the load voltage, which is equal to ID multiplied by R, L is equal to zero as well. And from Kirchhoff, we know that VN equal to VD plus VO or VRL. Now VO is zero. So basically VD is equal to VM input. So in the most of our cycle, when the input is less than 0 0.7, VO or VRL is equal to zero and VD is equal to V input. So all the input will just go to uh, VD. Now, so this is number one, we can say. Now, number two, still in the most of our cycle. Now, if the input is larger than 0 0.7, so the diode, the diode will turn on. Good. And once the diode is, turn, is turning on, VD will be constant equal to 0 0.7 volt. Now let's calculate. So this is VD, constant equal to 0 0.7 volt. That's fine. Again, from Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff will not change. The input is equal to VD plus VO. So VO will be equal to VN minus 0.7. What does that say? Whatever the input voltage is, which is now larger than 0.7, just subtract 0.7, this will be the output. Okay, so let's draw or sketch that part before going to the negative half side. This is VD, and this is Mr. VO or VR. Okay, so let's make, for example, green for the VD. So we are saying here there are two regions in the post of our cycle when the VM input is less than and when the VM input is higher than 0 0.7. So just, you know, this is just a sketch. So it doesn't need to be in uh, to scale. So you can, let me just, you know. So it doesn't have to be in a, to scale. So just choose any point and name it 0 0.7, that's fine. So we'll assume this is points. Of course, this is not at all to scale because the maximum voltage here is very high. It's 155.5 volt. <laughs> this is just 0.7. So it may be, you know, very something in here, for example, very small, but you know, it's just, it's just a sketch. I want to see that you understand. So choose some appropriate point. Okay. Now let's see. In the most of our cycle, where are the regions at which VM would is less than 0.7 and where are the regions at, at which VM would is higher than 0.7? So basically, before that point here, in that region here, and also that region, the input is less than 0.7, right? And between these two points, these values, all these values that I'm just, you know, dotted right, dotting right now is higher than 0 0.7. Good. So let's start by the regions. The two, these, these two small regions, this one and this one, in which the input is less than 0 0.7 and apply our equations. So we're gonna go down.
Now we're gonna fill this part and this part, this part and this part. Okay. So for VD, in these two small regions, when V input is less than 0.7, VD is equal to V input. So just copy and paste what's in here. So for example, when V input is zero, VD is zero. When V input, for example, is 0.1, there will be a 0.1. When there, for example, when there is 0.2, it will be 0.1. So until you reach 0.7. This is, for example, 0.7. So, you know, just copy and paste this, this bar. And the same stuff here. So when VM input is 0.7, there will be 0.7. When there is 0.5, for example, there will be 0 0.5. 0 0.4, 0 0.4. You know, until you, you reach zero, this point, zero. So just copy and paste. This is exactly this. And this is exactly this. Now let's sketch VR or V output. Basically, in these two regions, V output or uh, is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, where is V? This, yeah, V output or VRL is equal to zero. So let's do it with another color. V output is equal to zero. This is zero, just zero. All values are zero. Now, let's sketch or blot VR, VRL, and VD when V input is higher than points, which is basically this region, from this point to this point. Let's start by uh, VD. So VD is equal to 0.7 all the time. Whatever the value of the input, as long as it's higher than 0.7, then VD is 0.7. This is 0.7, basically. This, this, this height here is 0.7. How about VR? VR or VO is equal to V input minus 0.7. So let's do three important points and we just, you know, follow the curve. So for example, the start of this region is that point here at which V input is equal to 0.7. So 0.7 minus 0.7 is equal to zero. How about this one? Again, here is also the V input is equal to 0.7. So 0.7 minus 0.7 is again zero. How about this? This is Vmax. 110 minus, uh, or just 110, uh, 110 times square root of two, minus 0.7. So this will be Vmax. Minus 0.7. And again, any value in that region here, for V input, just subtract 0.7 and, you know, locate it for VR. Okay? So, for example, let's assume here is, it's just equal to 1. So, this will be 0.3. If it's equal to 2 here, for example, this will be... Uh, 1.3 and so on. So basically you will take this one, this, you know, this dome we can say, and just shift it down by 0.7. So it would be like this. This value is Vmax minus 0.7. And before going to the negative half cycle, one important information here, or observation we can say, this dome here is exactly this one. And this thing here, is exactly this one. And the Kirchhoff is satisfied. All the time, Kirchhoff is a fact. Okay? If you pick any time, any time, 
and you added up VR or VO and VD, you will get the input. So for example, let's hear. At the middle. VR is Vmax minus 0.7. VD is positive 0.7. If you add them up, 0.7 will cancel minus 0.7 and you will get Vmax, which is the input voltage. Let's get it. Okay. Now let's go to the negative half cycle. So number two, the negative half cycle. Okay, what will happen in the negative half cycle? Let's see. In the negative half cycle, the v, uh, v input will have negative values, these values here. All of them are negative. So it's like if you have a battery in that direction connected to the diode which have this polarity. So N is closer to P. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, the negative is closer to B and the positive is closer to N. So this would, this guy, this diode will be reversed. So the diode here is reversed. So it's off all the time. Except for some special case that we're gonna explore next time. But let's assume it's, it's off all the time. So if it's off all the time, then ID will be zero all the time. So IRL, which is VO, is equal to ID multiplied by RL is equal to zero all the time. That's it. Kershaw, VN equal to VO plus VD. VO is, easy, is zero all the time. So VD is equal to VN all the time. It's a sketch that. It's very easy. It's go back, bring green. Now we are interested in that region, from that point to that point, the negative half cycle. And whatever we, uh, the voltage in the negative, the input voltage in the negative half cycle, the diode is reversed, the diode is off, IR is equal to zero, so uh, VR is equal to zero, which is VO. So, and VD is equal to V input. So VD is equal to V input means just to take this part here, copy and paste here. Just to copy and minus V max. If we wanna do it point by point, that's fine also, zero, zero. Minus one, for example, will be minus one, minus two, minus two, minus Vmax, minus Vmax, minus Vmax, plus one, minus Vmax, plus one, you know, until we reach zero, zero, would also be zero. Any value will be covered in the VM, but will be covered to VD. That's why it has, both have the same shapes, just to copy and paste. How about VR? We just analyzed it that VR, all the time is equal to zero. So whatever the value of the input, just about zero here. And before we leave, this happens in the first cycle. It will repeat it. It will be repeated in the second, third, fourth cycle until as long as the input is operational. And you unplug, you didn't unplug the, you know, uh, the source. So basically you will have something like this. 
Boeing 7 again, continuous constant, and for VR, just repeat what's, what's happening in here. Okay. Now let's take a look. We are saying this should be AC to DC conversion, right? That should be our target. And that circuit that I just introduced, because I introduced it under the title, so it should do something for us. It's supposed to do the complete job to convert EC to, into, the, uh, into DC. But let's see what, what we have. The input is AC, as you see, sinusoidal wave. It has positive and negative. So let's characterize the two main characteristics of V input. V input, which is AC, has two main characteristics, which make which we make it AC. Number one, vary in the input, I mean, varies in direction. What does that mean? It means in the positive half cycle with positive input, this point has a voltage larger than this point. So we can say it's a battery like this. In the positive half cycle. In the negative half cycle though, this one has less, uh, less voltage than this one. So it's like a battery like this. So in the positive half cycle, the direction is, you know, upward. In the negative of cycle, the direction is downward. So the polarity is changing. So this is the first characteristic. So positive of cycle, polarity is that way. In the negative of cycle, the polarity in that way. Number two, it's AC. So values are also changing. So it, it has a change in direction or the polarity. It has a change in the value. But let's have a look at the output. <clears throat> So any AC should have a change in polarity, should have a change in the values. But our output here, this guy, if we look carefully at it, one of these two characteristics has, you know, it's gone. So in the most of our cycles, the polarity is like this. And during the negative half cycle, there is no polarity. It's just zeros. Then in the, in the next cycle, you have also positive, then no polarity. So we have one direction. So the output here, this number one is not applicable. And that's 50% that's of the conversion, 50%. Of the conversion. If it also has a constant uh, value, there is no change in value, just like there is no change in direction, then it's 100% conversion. But let's look, no. So the value is changing. So number two is applicable.
So we can just summarize this. The input, a change in direction, a change in value. But this guy only, it changes in value. But direction is constant. So we might say this is 50% conversion. Well, of course, there are some other, you know, modifications that we can do in order to reach, you know, something around 100% conversion. But half of the way is already done, which is making it just in one direction, the output, I mean, or the voltage. The polarity is not changing. It's always positive, negative. Not like the input. In how positive, half positive, negative, then in the negative half cycle, negative, positive, no. Okay? So that's half of the way. So let's continue. Okay, any question, any question, guys? Any sums, any anything not clear in that, uh, you know, in that part? Actually, this, you know, this problem here, this circuit that we just analyzed, is the same as the one that we did for clipping. It's just a special case when VD is equal to zero. So if we go back to the clipping circuit, it is it's it's exactly the same. But VB is just zero, and V output is taken from VR. Okay, so we are not doing anything new here. We just, you know, they are in series. So I just, you know, flip the locations, bring VD here, uh, and bring VR here. The same stuff, same circuit because they are in series, and VB is just equal to zero, which is just short, short circuit. If a battery is is uh, is producing zero voltage. That means zero voltage difference. So it's just a short circuit. And the clipping will be at 0 0.7, which is what we see here. Okay. Good. One little observation before we go, we go on. What I have explained or analyzed, I used constant voltage model. Constant voltage model. But usually in this circuit, in rectifiers, the input is much, much, much larger than the point seven. So, we can use the ideal model. Okay, this will make the analysis very easy. And also uh, it doesn't, it will not affect so much our, uh, our outputs. And we're gonna see this uh, in the lab maybe tomorrow or next week, that it doesn't matter. If 0.7 is very small, very small. You will not notice, you know, uh, such small output, basically. It's very small. But if the input is low, no. But usually these circuits are used to convert what you have in at home, which is 110 RMS, 155, and 155, 150 is very, very big compared to 2.7. So we usually ignore. Of course, in the exam and the homework, it will not be ignored. <laughs> I will ask for the 0.7 because this is a general case. If you can do this, then you can do the ideal model. Okay. Let's draw, sketch together the output on top of this. If, you know, the... Uh, if we use the ideal model. So if we use that, let's do with that with another color. For example, uh, yeah, this guy, here, for example. Okay. So 
the only change will be in the positive half cycle. The negative half cycle output will not be affected because the doubt is all the time is reverse. You know, this point seven is not needed anymore. So the output will be the same. But the change will be in the positive half cycle. Because now in the ideal model, the diode doesn't need 0.7. Once it's forward, it will conduct. Okay? So we say that if the input is larger than zero, then that's it. The diode is on, VD is equal to zero. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do the analysis for it. That's fine. Okay, so in the most of our cycle, number one. Diode is forward, but doesn't need this point seven. It can conduct at zero. So it's on and the VD is zero. It's just approximation because you know the input is very large. Okay. So, okay, we get one of the requirements for the unknowns, VD. And now using Kershaw, VN is equal to VD plus VO. So VO is equal to VN. And in the negative half cycle, this is very simple. Diode is reverse. It's off. ID is equal to zero. So VD, ah, VO, VR, is equal to zero because I multiplied by R is zero. And using Kirchhoff, VN is equal to VR, which is zero plus VO. So VO, uh, VD, because VO is zero, is equal to VN. The opposite. So let's apply this to the figures that we have. In the most of our cycle, VD is zero. VD is zero. And the negative is the same, same as this one, same as the constant voltage model. So we have still this, this guy. No change. But there is no clipping now. That's, that's, that's the only difference. Of course, in real world, there will be clipping, but it's very small compared to V maximum. How about VR? VR all the time equal to the input. The input is zero, there will be zero. The input is point 0.1, there will be point 0.1. The input is point 0.2, point 0.2. The input is one, the input is point 0.7, there will be point 0.7. The input is one, there will be one. The input is the maximum, there will be the maximum. So just copy and paste this dome here into here. This will be Vmax. This is just a copy and paste. And in reverse, I is diode is off. I is zero. I R. Uh, I'm sorry. V R is zero. Just and this is what we have actually. And again, if you you know add or sum up the two curves together, you can just you know add them up. You will get the V input. So. For example, this thing here plus zero, you will give you will get the same thing. This thing here plus zero, you will get the same stuff. Okay. So that's basically uh, the the half wave rectifier. Okay. Any question, guys? Anything not clear? I can answer what, whatever question you have. Okay. So let's go and make some analysis. Okay. So basically, I'm just, you know, uh, this is the basic, this is the outputs with constant voltage model. I will just give them back to, because the analysis with the vote constant will be a little bit harder. So, and it doesn't matter. So it will not produce much accurate results. Okay. We can use 
the ideal model and still getting good results. Okay, it's then zero. You have both now. So we said that, okay, we have now, you know, half conversion from AC to DC. That's fine. Let's get some, uh, make some analysis based on what we have. First of all, let's see why the input has no AC. AC, I'm sorry, has no DC. DC in a mathematical way, it is just the average value of the signal. So any DC voltage, any constant voltage is basically the average value of a signal. And we have some formula that calculates the average in math. So the average value of any value of any function f of x over some range of x between a and b is calculated as follows. So the average of f of x between a to b is equal to the integration from a to b of f of x dx divided by b minus a. So if you have any function, any function, any function, f of x with any values, something like any, any values arbitrary. And you wanna know it's its average value between two points, A and B, you just calculate the area under the curve from A to B. So this is basically area equal to A to B, F of X, DX, and divided by the distance between A and B, which is B minus A. This is what we're gonna do now, okay? So let's calculate, and this is, can be called DC value. This is DC value of f of x between a and b. Let's do the same for our input, which we are sure it's completely easy. EC, AC, 100%. There is no DC there, okay? So let's, let's do that. It's a periodic wave. So if you calculate something for the first, first cycle, then it will be remitted to the second, third, what, until infinite cycles. So let's take one cycle. And remember, this is T. This is T capital, this is T over two. So the input, the input, can be written in that way, V max, sine two by F T. And we can just continue and, you know, determine, so this would be V max. So that BDC of V input or the average value of V input is equal to the integration of our complete cycle from zero to T, V max sine two by F T DT over T minus zero. The distance between T and zero. Without going into details and analyzing this, can anybody prove to me this should be zero? Without making the integration. This should be zero. 
And we can just, you know, by looking just at the curve, this sinusoidal wave between zero and T, we can prove it should be zero. Without, you know, I can make the, you know, the integration of sine wave, of the sine and, you know, get everything done. But we can just by looking say that is zero. Should I choose one myself or uh, one will? Uh, well, you got an equal area above and an equal area below. That's right, and one of is one of one of the areas is positive and the other area is negative. Yeah, that's that's very valid. That's very correct. So this guy here, the, the the area here is positive, and you have here the area but negative. Okay, so this will be zero. Zero divided by anything is just zero. But we can of course do that. You know, if you just you know didn't consider such observation, you can do it analytically. But to make it uh, more easier for you, use theta, not, or theta, not, not the time. So this is basically is corresponding to, to y. So this is basic, t is corresponding to theta. And t capital is corresponding to, to y. And t over two is corresponding to y. So we can convert such integration into the following, just equivalent uh, from zero to two by V max sine theta D theta. So all of that is actually theta. Theta is equal to constant, which is two by F multiplied by T. So you can do such substitution for variables. It will be, it will make it very easy for you. Over T is actually, T capital is actually two by and zero is still zero. It's equal uh, V max. And the integration of sine theta is just minus cosine theta. This is equal minus V max over two by uh, cosine two by minus cosine zero. This is one, this is also one. So it's, it's actually equal to zero. Minus V max over two by times zero is just zero. So just analytical proof for our observation that there is no DC in the input. It's just a pure AC. But for the output, no. And basically, with the same observation as uh, uh, Christopher mentioned, if we look at this curve here, the V output, in the negative, the area is zero. But in the positive, no. The area is equivalent to this. So zero, uh, I'm sorry, something in positive plus zero. But in the beginning with VM is positive plus the same thing is negative, so it, it was zero. So now VDC for the output, for the output is equal to, it is exactly the same analysis. So we have from zero, but you have two functions now. There is a function between zero and by, and there is another function from, from by to two by. From zero to by, you have a sine wave, sine theta. This is function one. Function two from by to two by is actually zero. The function is constant equal to zero. So from zero to by, you have V max sine theta D theta plus from by to two by, zero d theta divided by two by again minus zero. Good. This guy is equal to zero. And again, the integration of sine theta is again minus cosine theta, zero to by over two by. Cosine pi minus cosine zero. zero. This guy is minus one. This guy is one. And there is, there is a minus before that. 
So it's actually equal to V max minus over two by multiplied by minus two. So this guy will go with this guy, two will go with two. This is equal to V max over, it's not zero, V max over by. So there is a DC component we can say in the output. The output has some sort of DC. Okay, a DC value, an average value. And usually people uh, draw it in that way. So you have the, the actual output that you see on oscilloscope is something like this. Just a half a sine wave. And you have then your DC value. DC value. Just a sketch equal to V max over bar. Okay, guys, so we prove analytically now using mathematics, of course, based on the ideal voltage model output. If we use a constant voltage model, it would be harder, much harder, okay? That there is a DC component in the output. The output has a DC, some form or some sort of DC, okay? Any question? Good. Okay. There is a famous problem that I didn't mention, okay, that may happen in the in negative half cycle. So let's assume that any any diode has a breakdown voltage. And we know if it's rectifier uh, diode, this uh, usually this, this uh, breakdown voltage in reverse is very high. So, if we draw the actual voltage characteristics, we have something like this. ID. VD. So there is a breakdown. There might be, I'm sorry, a breakdown, uh, a breakdown region. There is, there is a breakdown region in the diet. So watch out, because when we look at the output, I will draw now the ideal output with four. We can do actually the, the actual one, that's fine, with green, okay. So this is out using constant voltage mode. This is the output of the, of the diode. It was something like this. This is VO, this is Mr. VD. So the maximum voltage, maximum reverse voltage on the diode is actually equal to minus V max as a magnitude because you know this word max was negative is not mathematically doesn't make sense. So we usually make, uh, we consider the amplitude. To, so we can use max and minimum. So the diode in reverse bias in the negative half cycle might experience very high voltage because this guy, for example, is minus 155.5 volt or minus 110 square root of two, which is very high. Now let's ask us, ask a question. If the breakdown voltage of the diode is, for example, minus 100, which is as a magnitude, less than minus 110 uh, square root of two, what will happen?
Any ideas? It's still going to clip, uh, but on that negative yeah. cycle, it's just going to clip yes. at a much higher voltage. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yes. So the analysis will be different. So let's take this, you know, so assume for assuming the diode has breakdown voltage that is less than the Vmax. This will make a clipping in the negative half cycle as well. And that's very bad. Let's do Let's redo the analysis of the negative half cycle. So now, number two again, because number one was the most of half cycle, we already done it. In the negative half cycle, we cannot ignore anymore the fact that the diode might turn on, but in reverse. It will conduct the current, but in reverse. Okay? So we said that if the input is less than V breakdown of the diode. And here is again magnitude because the input is negative. So the diode is off. ID equal to zero. VO is equal to zero because it's VR. And VD is equal to V input. Okay, that's fine. That is the same stuff that we got in the previous analysis. But now this is the trick part. If the input B is larger than the breakdown voltage of the diode, the diode will turn on in reverse. The diode is on but in reverse. I mean the current will be negative, that's fine. And now VD is constant equal to minus VBD. And using Kirchhoff, again, V input equal to VD plus VO. So VO is equal to VN minus uh, the output, okay, so plus VBD. Let's now sketch this new output for both diode and also the VO or VR. Let's do that with another color of whatever it is, yeah. this guy. That's fine. Good. So again, we're going to divide or we look for the regions in the negative half cycle at which the input is larger than VBD and the other regions in which VBD, uh, V input is, is less than VBD. The breakdown. So let's assume this is V breakdown. This is the point. This one here. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. Let's, okay. Let's see. In that region here and that region, again, the small region, but this, they are not small now because the breakdown is usually high. Okay? The diode is off. That's fine. So when the diode is off, VR is zero. Still same as what we got before. And VD is equal to V input. So take this part, copy and paste here. Take this part. Copy and paste But now from this point until this point, V input is larger than as a magnitude V breakdown. So the diode will conduct and it will, you know, clip the input at minus ZBD. And V output or VR is basically any value here 
shifted up by V breakdown. Or if you want to make it point by point, that's fine as well. So here is the input is minus VBD, minus VBD plus VBD, it will be zero. Again, at that, po at that point, the input is minus VBD, uh, and you, you, you add VBD, so it again zero. Here is the input is Vmax, minus Vmax, Vmax plus VBD, it will be minus Vmax plus VBD. So basically, you will take this part here and put it here. And the tip here, the negative peak is minus Vmax plus magnitude of VBD. Oh, let's look now at the output. Is that the thing that we is that we were uh, expecting from that circuit? Now the even the fifty percent has gone. We said that uh, if the breakdown voltage is much higher than v max, minus Vmax, we said that in reverse the die is completely off, so the output on the die on the resistance is just zero. So, but now no, now. The output is here has this polarity, and in that region has this polarity. So it's also so it's changing in mag in value and also changing in direction in or polarity. So even this fifty percent has gone. Okay, so you must look for. So you know your application, you know your input, you know what is the maximum. Uh, in negative inputs that you can have, then when you're gonna choose a, uh, a diode for your rectifier, you should choose a diode that has a breakdown voltage larger than the, mac the maximum negative voltage that will be uh, the input for your circuit. So this is a problem. And we can solve it by using a proper diode, a diode that, have a, that has a breakdown voltage larger than Vmax, minus Vmax as a magnitude. But next, let's ask a question. If you search and you couldn't find the diode that has such, you know, larger V breakdown, then the input that you have, and this is a very possible, you know, uh, situation or you may find it but it's very expensive what you gonna do it's very simple one very simple solution let's see we have an answer here Add more, uh, nope. Use more diodes. No, it's not that. So basically you can, uh, when you when you said add more resistance, if you mean make a, a, a kind of voltage divider, so the input will be reduced, that's fine. I, this is acceptable, okay? But the basic idea is to decrease the voltage, the input voltage. So, so the solution, other than you know, uh, getting a proper diode. So let's write down the solutions. Solutions. Number one, this is not the D, uh, the DC or the fifty percent DC we can say anymore. Choose proper diet with V breakdown larger than V max. Number two, decrease the input voltage itself. How 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 can I do that? The out the, the voltage that we have at home in the out, it, it, it's always one tin. Okay, 
Yeah, you can do that, but you can for you make some stage before your cell before you far in which you can uh, step down this voltage. So you can do that using either voltage divider, something like this. And this is by the way very simple. Or you can do something using transformer. You guys have uh, studied transformers before? You guys are aware of transformers and how they work? Good. Can't so, use them some. Good, good. It's very, it's very simple. We, we, we will not go deep in them. It's very simple. So, so this guy and you know this area as well. So another, another this area. This guy is bulky. So now we, we can say, okay, why we should use a transformer if it's if it if it's bulky, okay why we just depend on just a very simple voltage divider like this because of the power consumption so these are the advantages one two these advantages consume much power the transformer on the other hand it's very simple operation so for example, if you make more uh, turns, we can say here in rather, so if, if the, ter the number of turns on the input side is smaller, it's larger than the number of turns on the diode side or the rectifier side, then the voltage will go down. So basically, if we say this is uh, V1, and this is V2. So V1 over V2 is equal to N, N1, N2. Okay. That's basically the, if you have N turns here, and uh, let's call them N1, the number of turns, for example, 1000. And you have N2 here, N2 turns, for example, 500. Then V2 will be half of V1. And remember, V1 is equal to V input from this loop here. Okay. And now V2 is your new input. So V2 equal to N1 or no, N2 over N1 multiplied by V1 or V input. Okay. So this is a disadvantage of these transformers or these transformers are they are very bulky. They are very, you know, huge in size. But the great advantage, less power consumption. Ideally, they should be zero power consumption. Ideally, okay. But because, you know, uh, these coils uh, are made of uh, wires, so there is still, you know, internal resistance rho multiplied by L over A, the cross-section area of the wires. So there is still, but very small, very, very small. Ideally, if this resistance is zero, then, you know, you are not consuming any power. You consume reactive power, which is not considered, you know, as a true form of power. Okay, so that's the, the, the solution. So for example, let's take an example. If VBD is equal to 100, so Vmax in reverse should be less than or equal to 100. 
but Vn max is equal to 155.5. So what we're going to do? We're going to bring design uh, a transformer, okay, such that Vn max multiplied by N1 over N2 equal to 100 or less than or equal to 100. From this, N1 over, uh, I'm sorry, N2 over N1. N2 over N1 is less than or equal 100 over Vn max, which is 100 over 155.5. <laughs> so for example, you can choose N2 to be 100. So you can put 100 Co uh, turn here and 156 on that one because you can you cannot have half a half a half a turn okay so you can put 156 turn this will make the v2 slightly less than 100 okay this is one choice by that way, you can reduce the input voltage to a limit that is acceptable by the diode. Okay. Any question, guys? See you tomorrow, guys. See you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.